Chris, what is our second main topic today? This one comes from Edison. Obviously, when they announced that Hugh Jackman was coming back to play Wolverine again in Deadpool 3, almost everyone was super excited. The only people that weren't were those that were worried that somehow the perfect ending for Logan would somehow be messed with and ruined. Jackman just did an interview where he said they absolutely won't mess with Logan's timeline. Does this put you at ease knowing that? Thanks and bring on the filthy. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, Edison. And what I called the second biggest piece of movie news that I have ever covered in my career. The first being, of course, that Disney had picked up Lucasfilm and that there was going to be new Star Wars movies. What I called the second biggest thing was that Hugh Jackman Gunn was coming back to play Wolverine again in a Deadpool movie. That to me is like the second best piece of news ever. But as Edison points out in his email, there was some trepidation among some people about, hey, listen, Logan, to some people, may be the greatest comic book film of all time. It's certainly up there in the conversation. It's in my top three. Logan is one of the greatest comic book films of all time, maybe the greatest comic book of all time, with a gorgeous, poetic, almost Shakespearean kind of ending. Are you going to mess with that? And that was something that a lot of people were really nervous about. Well, anyway, Hugh Jackman himself uh, was being interviewed and talked about this, about you know whether or not uh, this could be happening. Could this be something that gets in the way of things? And Hugh Jackman said this. This comes to us from the folks uh, over at Variety who said the following. Jackman recently told Sirius XM that his Wolverine return was contingent on not messing with the events of Logan, which both fans and the actor view as the perfect conclusion for that iteration of Wolverine. It's all because of this uh, device they have in the Marvel world of moving around timelines, Jackman said of his return. Now we can go back because, you know, it's science. So I don't have to screw with the Logan timeline, which was important to me, and I think probably to the fans too. So Hugh Jackman saying, okay, yeah, one of the first things that, that I brought up was, okay, we can do this, but it cannot interfere with the Logan movie. That was my swan song until I decided to come back. But still, that was the swan song for the character. It might be the best comic book movie ever made, depending on who you ask. It's perfect. That can't be messed with. Now, of course, we talked about this before, though. There is almost nothing that Marvel could do that would mess with Logan. Because as Ryan Reynolds, good Canadian kid himself, pointed out, the events of Logan theoretically take place in the year 2029. Mm -hmm. So whatever we do in this movie doesn't have anything to do with Logan. Not to mention James Mangold himself, the director of Logan, had previously said when they were putting the movie out that this movie doesn't really take place in the exact same universe as those other X-Men films. Clearly a lot of similarities. We know Professor X, we know all that kind of stuff, but you know, you also see changes and differences between Logan and some of the, the quote unquote canon schmanon of the previous X-Men films. So James Mangold himself, the director of that film said, this is kind of in its own universe anyway, but still to make sure that because, you know, Ryan Reynolds at the end of the last Deadpool movie started jumping around timelines and appearing, popping up in other movies and things like that. It's like, no, 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 no. Can't do any of that with Logan. Logan cannot be touched. So even though I never thought there was a real threat of Logan being messed with, it's nice at least to hear that Hugh Jackman made his starting point. Okay, we can do this, but number one, can't mess with Logan. And it sounds like they're going to make sure that they abide by that and go, don't go in that direction. Rob, did you ever feel there was any kind of a danger to to Logan itself being messed with? And what do you think about Hugh Jackman's comments here? No, because, you know, the, the whole tone of Logan is very different. Um, in a way, it's kind of like we saw it again in No Time to Die when, when Bond finally dies. And at the end of the movie, it says James Bond will return. You know, we live in that world. So this doesn't, it doesn't bother me because, you know, we're so, we're so caught up on the idea of continuity, John. And I think that what we're going to get is a film that's so far removed from this film in terms of its tone and what happens, I think we're gonna get a romp. We're gonna, you know, I talked yesterday, wouldn't it be great if we did like a world's finest movie with Batman and Superman, like Lethal Weapon 2? Right. Well, that's a lot more along the lines of what this is gonna be. I would imagine that Deadpool gets Wolverine, takes him out of whatever timeline he's in, and they go on a multiversal rampage of mirth and mayhem of some kind and it's going to be fun and we're going to love it but um i don't think it's going to affect the poignant um the poignant nature of logan 
Chris, you hear, you know, Jackman's words. Mm -hmm. I love hearing him say that that was his first rule. We can't mess with Logan. Yeah. But was there ever a danger of Logan being messed with here? I don't know. What no, do you think? No, I don't think so. And even if they did go into 2029 or something, it doesn't take away how great Logan was. I'm not going to watch this Deadpool movie and go, well, now Logan's a dog shit film, isn't it? <laughs> no, like that's not going to happen. I, I think that, you know, Hugh Jackman has so much respect for this character because it really is such a defining role of his, right? You just associate Hugh Jackman with Wolverine. And I know these two just have such real love for each other and respect for each other, despite all the rip and everything right they're besties so i think they're going to do a really fun wonderful like buddy romp here with these characters that's still going to allow logan to exist as it was and have this be its own completely different animal we've got multiverses we've got different timelines we've got all kinds of stuff happening in marvel it's going to be fine no big deal here all right so here's the big question this is the big one mm -hmm. does patrick stewart make an appearance clearly he's not he's not gonna have a role in the film but does patrick stewart make an appearance in deadpool 3 rob yes or no yes you think he does i think he does okay chris does patrick stewart make an appearance in deadpool 3 i don't think he does taylor put that up as a poll if you know how to create a poll oh i don't think i have access to that okay i i will do Sorry. that ray we go over to you does patrick stewart show up in Deadpool 3. Yeah. You say he does as well. Yeah. Jonathan, what about you? I think so. No. Okay. Oh, no. We got to know. And Taylor? Yes. He's going to okay. do it. You think so too? I'm going to say what? yes. What? What's that, Ray? No, go ahead. <laughs> no, what were you going to say? No, because I'm thinking. You got to speak into your mic. It's, 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 it's like a, a multiverse thing, right? So uh, it has to be. Uh, um, some sort of a uh, timeline thing. So no, uh, I'll stick with yes. All right. So I uh, just for those of you guys watching, I'll go to a second here. Just for those of you guys watching us live right now, I did put up a poll in the live chat and it's a simple question. Does Professor X show up in Deadpool 3? Uh, right now we've got 400 and now it's 500 and something votes and 60% are saying yes, he does. Rob? I'm going to go even further. McAvoy, Stewart, Fassbender and Ian McKellen also are going to appear in this movie. Oh my God. That, okay. That would be, I'll go on, I'll go out right now. That would top the Illuminati scene in Doctor Strange. And they're going to have bigger roles to play. No, you're, so you're not just talking cameo now. You no. think you're actually going to have I mean, a legitimate uh, role. They're going to have, they're going to have, I mean, they're not going to be in it probably very much, but I don't think it's just going to be a one note joke. I think that there's going to be something because they still have to make a movie that has real stakes and real peril. It can't just be a ridiculous romp. And I think it's all going to lead into getting Deadpool into the MCU. So the, we're going to see all of these different iterations. And Wolverine is the only character that can traverse the two timelines of the first class timeline and the modern, the modern day. And as a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of the X-Men in this movie. Because it's a way to it's a way to shut the door and then open so the door. So you think James Marsden, Famke po Jansen? Possibly. Possibly, yes. Because why not? Halle Berry. Why not? <laughs> why not do that? And whatever's going to happen, because here's the way to close that door on those characters in the MCU, or at least either shunt them over to Secret Wars or do something. Why not make this a universal romp? Or a yeah, multiversal universal. I, I, I don't see that happening. Unless, they, we did see James McAvoy in Deadpool 2, mm -hmm. uh, which was interesting. Uh, so anyway, yeah, guys, question is for you. By the way, final result of the poll, just over 1,000 votes came in. And the final thing is you guys are saying, yes, Patrick Stewart will pop up in Deadpool 3. 39% of you are saying no. Thank you to everybody for participating in that poll. Question is for you guys. What do you think about this? Hugh Jackman says that the events of Logan will not be touched. Did you ever feel that that was a danger in the first place? Maybe yes, maybe no. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, 
Manscaped. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topic. Tell your in-laws about your new cutting-edge ball trimmer and gift yourself or the man in your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Trim up your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and use the code CAMPIA for free shipping and 20% off. And this year I am so thankful for Manscaped because like most of you guys, I used to use Neanderthalic Dark Age methods to trim my balls. Not anymore, thanks to Manscaped. It's time for all of us to give thanks to Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, or as I like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Inside, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, Crop Preserver ball deodorant, Crop Reviver toner, Performance Boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. The heart of the package, their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code CAMPIA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the promo code CAMPIA. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from Manscaped. Your balls will thank you.